Praise God. Um, it's good to come your way again uh, with God's word. Um, I started the teaching earlier on. I was teaching a little bit about relationships. And I mentioned that it's a subject I get asked a lot to speak about. So I started with uh, Relationship 101. And I started talking about what the single phase of life is not and what the single phase of life is. So I'll read... Um, a verse from Ecclesiastes chapter 10, uh, and then I'll continue the teaching. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse number 10. If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. And so um, already we've talked about the single phase of life, and we've talked about the fact that it's a phase of your life where there's not enough information uh, in the church world somehow we're exploring the word of god we're finding things out from the word of god we're finding out ways to navigate through the single phase of life and so i shared on what it is not okay and then i shared on what the single phase of life is i'll start um, this session by talking about the fact that it is extremely important that you make time to explore uh, very well the single phase of your life to learn all the lessons, know all that you need to know, so that when the time comes for you to be in a dating relationship, a courting relationship, uh, and then um, marriage, you know who to share yourself with because you already know yourself. Now, one problem you can have if all you're trying to do as a single person is to get married is that you won't have enough information about the next phase of your life it's like somebody who is in class one who is trying at all costs to be in class three or class four and not paying attention to what the class one teacher is teaching you must pay attention to the things at your level as a single person learn them well you must make sure you enjoy this phase of your life because by the grace of god you will move you will shift to the next season of your life and you want to make sure that when you are in the next season of your life you are ready for that season of your life so there are five common mistakes a lot of single people make that i want to teach you so that you must avoid i want you to avoid these five common mistakes number one don't fight being alone. Now, being alone is not the same as loneliness. Don't fight being alone. Being alone is not the same as loneliness. Now, a lot of the times what we see is that we see people doing whatever it takes to be in a relationship with somebody, doing whatever it takes to have somebody in their lives uh, who, like I've said earlier on, that they can call their personal person. And sometimes um, one of the best things you can do for yourself is to be alone, learn, build yourself, grow, groom yourself, and get yourself ready for who is coming. Now, you see, I want you to understand that if you increase your value, for instance, as a person by upgrading yourself, it will help in the people that you have the opportunity to meet, to date, to court, and eventually to marry. And so don't fight being alone. Being alone is not the same as loneliness. What we've done is that many of us assume that the people in relationships are not lonely. But I'm telling you, if you are in the wrong relationship, um, you will feel very lonely. If you are in the wrong relationship, you will feel very lonely. There are people who are already married and they don't feel any connection. They sleep on the same bed at night. They sit in the same car to work. You know, they live in the same house and yet there's no connection. They feel so lonely. And so aloneness is very different from loneliness. So during this time of your singleness, you might be alone, but you can have very important relationships that keep you, all right, that engage you. People that you can interact with to avoid this feeling of loneliness. The second thing is don't fight to be coupled, you know, to satisfy any other reason apart from the will of God. Now, I've seen people, especially in the church, 
when they get to this point, they abandon God's will. And all they want is they want somebody in their lives. They want somebody who is a trophy they can show off to their friends. They want somebody who they can carry around as their handbag so everybody can know. They want somebody who they can brag about to friends. They want somebody who can drive them around, somebody who can take their car to the mechanic, somebody who can fix their tie for them because their car tie is, you know, deflated. You know, if this is the only reason why you need a relationship, you are not ready. When you are ready for a relationship, it must satisfy God's law. It must satisfy God's law. That this is what God wants for me, and this is the person that God has chosen for me. The third thing I want you to avoid is to avoid settling out of pressure. And there's a lot of pressure when you are at a certain age, you know, um, and you are not in um, a dating relationship, a courting relationship, or married. A lot of pressure from friends, from family, from work colleagues, you know, from everywhere. There's so much pressure. And the moment you meet people, they ask questions. And some of the questions are so insulting or sometimes so suggestive that you know that what they are talking about is that you must have somebody in your life. A lot of good people have lost their morals because they wanted to get somebody at all costs and so that they could satisfy the pressure and get out of being pressured and by so doing have gotten themselves into a lot of trouble i want you to avoid this pressure trap avoid it don't let anybody pressure you you are ready when god is ready for you you are ready when god makes the way for you you are ready when god brings that person into your life now, for the Christians who are praying, who are waiting upon the Lord, I want to find out from you, aside praying, aside being faithful to God, what else can you really do? Because then, you know, I know uh, people talk about dressing well, smelling good. People talk about being nice and all of those things. And I'm telling you, as a pastor, there are people who do all those things and more. But then the scripture teaches us it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth. It is God that showeth mercy. And you need to understand it happens because God makes it happen. And so you wait on your timing. I don't want you to during this season even be pressured, so pressured that you become envious and jealous of people. You need to be happy for your friends. When they invite you to the weddings, you must go. And you must go with gifts. You must be excited. I don't want you to say things like, Pastor, this is the eighth wedding I'm attending this year. I'm not attending another wedding. I want you to keep attending those weddings excitedly, remembering what the scriptures have said. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of any man what God is about to do for them that love him. If you really love God, if you are really walking in the way of God, I'm telling you, you don't need to buy into the pressure. Wait on God wait on god some of you are so pressured you want to get pregnant to trick somebody to marry you you want to lie about who you are and about what you have so that you can get a certain lady interested in you all of that is not necessary if you can wait on the lord the bible says they that wait upon the lord they will renew their strength also the fourth mistake I want you to avoid is that during this time, don't be undecided about the kind of person you want to share your future with. So the person you want to date, the person you want to court, the person you want to marry. I want you to be very decided. I want you to know what you want, who you are looking for. I want you to have your list like i said in the first part of the series i want you to have a list i want you to have a very working uh, a very workable idea of what you want who you want to be with you know how must he treat you how um he the kind of person he must be these things are really important yes there are certain things that um um, maybe they might change so for instance maybe if you write in your list you want to marry a doctor okay these things might these things are not you know like hard and fast and cast in concrete because then they might not happen the way you want them to happen but then what i want you to understand is that at least there are certain basics you want
want somebody who loves God. You want somebody who loves you. You want somebody who treats you well. You want somebody who is responsible. Those are things you can't miss and you mustn't compromise on. Okay. Now, the final thing I want to share in this video is that during this time, don't be carnal and without God's leading. During the time you are single, I don't want you to be carnal and without the leading of the Spirit of God. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. What I want you to know is that God takes responsibility personally for leading his sons and daughters. And if you are one of God's children, if you are crying to your father, he's hearing you. And God is working on a miracle. God is working on a package that is going to be more than what you are praying about. Remember that God will always do exceedingly abundantly about that which we ask or imagine. And so I want you to put yourself in that space where during this time you are not carnal and you are not um, bowing to the whims of the world and following the plans and the dictates of the world, but you are following God's righteous plan. You're going God's way. I want you to know as you do that, God has a plan for you. It will be marvelous. It will bring glory to God. It will honor God. Men will see it and they will glorify our Father in heaven. So that's number five. Don't forget it. During this time, don't be carnal. Be spiritual. Allow the Spirit of God to lead you. God bless you so much.